Rhett, 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 if you go, where shall I go? What shall I do? Oh. While much weathering takes place over long periods of time, sometimes millions of years, there are certain events which produce conditions for fast weathering. When fast weathering events occur, the face of the Earth can change rapidly and sometimes radically. Some of the most drastic events are at times catastrophic. Many rapid changes take place as a result of earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, and floods. Due to shifting tectonic plates, more than a million earthquakes a year shake, roll, and cause sudden shock to the Earth's surface. In the United States, while earthquakes are more common in the West, they also happen in the Midwest and along the East Coast, and they cannot be predicted. Along the surface of the Earth, there are about 20 tectonic plates that are constantly moving slowly past each other. Those plates squeeze and stretch. When they do, huge rocks form at their edges, which shift with great force, causing an earthquake. With enough force, the Earth's crust is forced to break, releasing energy that moves through the Earth as waves that we can feel on the surface. A fault is an area of stress in the Earth where broken rocks slide past each other, causing a crack in the Earth's surface. Earthquakes can result in long, narrow cracks called fissures on the ground, creating gorges and valleys where none existed, and they can cause sandy soils to liquefy, causing the ground to sink suddenly. This is called fluidizing. In regions with mountains, earthquakes can cause landslides, causing small hills to totally disappear, fast weathering at its extreme. Volcanoes are openings in the Earth's crust through which molten lava, ash, and gas lava are ejected. The molten rock causes pressure to build, causing volcanic eruptions. When that happens, gases and rock blast up through the opening and spill over to fill the air with ash and lava fragments. Some volcanic eruptions, like the one at Kilauea in Hawaii, cause lateral flows of lava over the surface of the Earth, dropping into the ocean, forming new land mass as the lava cools. Lateral blasts, lava flows, hot ash flows, mudslides, avalanches, falling ash, and floods are all byproducts of volcanic activity which quickly change the face of the earth by destroying everything in the path of the lava, like entire forests and sometimes homes. So how do volcanoes form? They're formed when magma within the earth's upper mantle works its way to the surface. Once it reaches the surface, it erupts to form lava flows and ash deposits. As time passes and the volcano continues to erupt, it grows larger and larger. One of the most unique examples of volcanic activity in the United States is Yellowstone National Park, which sits on top of a very active layer of magma close to the Earth's surface that ejects water and steam. It is a geyser that erupts every 91 minutes. It was quick, dramatic, and deadly, the 2004 tsunami that hit Thailand. What is a tsunami? It's a series of ocean waves that send a surge of water. Tsunami waves can reach heights of over 100 feet or 30.5 meters. When one of those waves hits land, a wall of water can cause widespread destruction, instant weathering when they crash to shore. Tsunamis are caused by undersea earthquakes where tectonic plates meet. When the ocean floor at one of the plate boundaries rises or falls suddenly, it displaces the water above it, launching a rolling wave which heads for land. And they move fast, up to 500 miles an hour, or as fast as a jet plane so they can cross the Pacific Ocean in less than a day, and they don't lose very much energy along the way. In the middle of the deep ocean, a tsunami's waves might only appear to be a foot or so high, but as they reach shallow water near to the shore, the waves slow down and begin to grow in energy and height. The lowest point beneath the crest of the wave is called the trough. It often reaches shore first, producing a vacuum effect that sucks coastal water out to sea, exposing the harbor and sea floor, acting as a warning sign that a tsunami is about to hit. Sometimes a tsunami is a series of waves called a wave train, which can be even more destructive to shorelines than a single large wave. But ocean water isn't the only big water event that can produce fast weathering. Floods are far more common. Floods happen when too much rain falls, like during a rainstorm, causing rivers to overflow their banks. Too much rain brought by storms and strong winds cannot be absorbed by the soil. Flooding occurs when rivers and streams can't carry away the extra rainwater or snow melt, and they overflow onto normally dry land. 
Farmland, homes, even entire towns can be washed away with people and animals often drowning. Hurricanes and major coastal storms also cause floods. Because of large coastal populations, these can be very serious events. Sometimes floods happen quickly due to sudden cloudbursts or thunderstorms. This is called flash flooding. Flash floods in mountain regions erode the soil due to water traveling down slopes at high speeds, often with little warning. And sometimes floods are caused when man-made structures like dams fail. Nearly every flood causes some amount of fast weathering to take place. Flooding can also happen in the unlikeliest places, like the desert. In 1905, the Salton Sea appeared in California's Imperial Valley, a desert after a flood along the Colorado River. The Salton Sea is a shallow salt lake located directly over the San Andreas Fault, 226 feet below sea level. Even though it's in the desert, it's the largest lake in California.